right, this one is about Juan Ramon Mata. See the man on the screen? Juan Ramon Mata. I'm going to introduce y'all the characters that, you know, social media don't tell you about because they didn't run path with them, and they're not really on social media like that. I was locked up with Juan Ramon Mata in 1996, up to about 99. I did three years with him in ADX Supermax. So sit back, enjoy the ride, and let me tell you about this legendary folk hero from Honduras. I. You know what it is, you know what it is, Unique Mecca Audio, man, I'm here, man. This is about Juan Ramon Mata. I met him in 1996 in ADX. They put me in D-Block, and that's how I met Juan Ramon Mata. Juan Ramon Mata was a Honduran who was connected with the Medellin cartel, okay? Now, he was the richest man in Honduras. If anybody from Honduras is watching this, tap in and put it in the comments and agree to disagree. Juan Ramon was worth $2 billion. They caught him allegedly with a shipment that was sent to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Miami area with 8,000 pounds of cocaine that was in hollowed out furniture. He took furniture, imagine a desk, and the desk, like this thick, is hollowed out. The legs this thick, hollowed out, and it's stuffed with cocaine. That's what they seize, okay? Now, so you understand, this man here, I'm going to equate him, you know, because I like to ride. You know, I like to ride. So I'm going to equate him or equate him with Jim Brown in Jamaica, Tivoli Gardens, you know, area Don. He was an area Don, Jim Brown. Juan Ramon Matas was a country Don. He took care of the country of Honduras. Now, they looked at him as a folk hero. He was considered like a Robin Hood. Now, Juan Ramon Matas, so you understand, he was, you know, one of the biggest, you know, Drug dealers allegedly during the time. Now, Juan Ramon Mata, he's allegedly one of the uh, people that was connected with the kidnapping and torture and murder of a DEA agent. He was later, you know, uh, uh, acquitted of that. You know, they didn't have no evidence of that. But that was the reason for them getting him. So now, let's get into Juan Ramon Mata so you understand. You understand? Now, with, you know, he was reportedly worth, you know, billions, you know. When he entered into the alleged drug game, they said that, you know, he's the one who brokered the first deal with the Medellin going through Mexico to bring the drugs into the United States. They said that they was using Honduras as a hub, as a holding point. Now, it got so bad, you know, in Honduras, because that's a third world country, was very poor, that they didn't have a school in a rural area, and the politicians and government didn't want to build a school. So Ramon, being the most wealthiest man, he built a school in Honduras, and in that school that he built in Honduras, he had the name of other drug lords on every desk. So every child sat at a desk that had the painted name of a drug lord on it because that's how he respected and represented, you know, his comrades. Now, the school, you know, had every desk with a painted name on it, you know. Um, he also created jobs because he owned the tobacco factory. He got his own cigar called 
You know, Juan Ramon Mata Cigar. Google that. I was with him in ADX. That's why I, the rap bastards and trolls don't like me. You know, because as one of the rap bastards labeled me the most interesting man, you know, alive. Because I was with men like this. I ran with the Cali Cartel when I was on the street. They was at war with the Medellin at the time. The Cali couldn't send no drugs to Washington Heights. If they send any drugs to Washington Heights where I was from, you know, that's the Cali cartel. The Medellin reportedly, allegedly went back to their country and killed everybody in their family, all the way down to the youngest child and their pet monkey bubbles. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how serious this is. So. The Cali Cartel, which was the Rodriguez brothers, they knew not to bring their drugs up to Washington Heights where I was at. But that's what helped me out. Big shout out and round of applause to my uncle, rest in peace, David Hyatt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Calm down, y'all. Calm down. Let me give David a three-gun salute. All right? Now, David had the Cali cartel. He couldn't move the drugs. He called me, told me he couldn't move the drugs, and he needed help, so he gave me an audition. The audition went like this. I might have mentioned it before, but right now I just feel like riding. You know what I mean? You know what it's like when you just riding, and you know? Now, the audition went like this. Dave called me over. He's playing backgammon. He said, yo, I got five keys on the counter. Take that and go ahead and do what you got to do with it. Come see me in a couple of days. I looked. I get the five keys. I shoot up town. I came right back with the 50,000, 10,000 a key when it was going for between 17 and 20 on the street, you know? So I hurried up and made a little 70 grand because I dumped them for seven, you know, for 17. So I made a little 70 grand off that one run. I came back uptown. Instead of coming uptown with just the 50, I came back uptown with the 120,000 and I gave it to him and said, you hold that. He said, All right, well, you know, there's another five under the counter. I grabbed that shot uptown, came back with another 170,000. That's like approximately a quarter million dollars in less than an hour for you rat bastards that want to keep track of, you know, how I got my money because you was busy doing frivolous things and you couldn't phantom getting the type of money that I was getting. I made 140,000 in an hour as long as it took me to get from 93rd Street up to 160th Street area of Washington Heights. You hear what I'm telling you? You know, so, you know, you rat bastards, sit back. I'm going to give y'all some game now because I'm going to tell you about Juan Ramon Mata that was way, way out of my league. That little 25 keys a day that I mentioned, it freaked everybody out in 2023 because before that dude was on YouTube talking about who had the most money and I was locked up, buried alive, doing life plus 20 because I refused to tell all my comrades and I refused to get into, you know, the Don Diva and Feds magazine and other hood magazines telling my story because they would have never let me out but i'm out now and i'm here to tell the youth it's not worth it i made it to the top of the totem pole and it's definitely not worth it let's ride so now let me go back to juan ramon monte this man had a shipment seized with eight thousand pounds of cocaine okay that's four thousand kilos that they took and that was considered as the largest shipment in United States history at the time. That's what they took from that hollowed out furniture. You understand? So now the Honduras, you know, are, are, are people, they loved him because he was the folk hero. He's the Robin Hood. Yeah, you know? he, they consider him as a hero while the United States consider him as the biggest drug dealer of all time at that time. So they went to Honduras and tried to get Juan Ramon Monte and extradite him back to the United States, but they couldn't touch this man. They couldn't touch him. Excuse the be beeping in the mic, but I'm not even going to stop this. You know, we're going to get this right for the next episode. All right. That's where the cash app come in to help get the equipment right, you know. Cash App was just on the screen. Make sure it says it was created in 2020. Hit the logo. So now, Juan Ramon Mata, so you understand, he was considered as the wealthiest man in Honduras. They said he was worth about $2 billion. He created jobs. He had a tobacco uh, farm 
where people used to pick tobacco, you know, roll the cigars and sell the Juan Ramon Martha cigars. When I was in ADX Supermax with him and I was just learning to read and write, I was so good at math. He used to show me the pie charts he used to get for his many businesses that he owned at the time. And it will show you what it grossed over the, the, you know, the 90 day quarter, you know, and Everybody said, oh, how could he, man? He couldn't have sold 25 keys a day. He goes, a man that got knocked with, you know, allegedly 4,000 keys. And he dusted off his shoulders and kept it moving. You know what I mean? That little 25 keys a day, I'm telling you, YouTube was watching this now that can't phantom what went on in my era. That wasn't shit compared to the men, you know, that I associated with. You know, that was that wasn't even crumb. That was like a morsel on the side of your mouth when you eat. You get a little morsel. Not even a crumb is so small. That's what my little 25 keys a day that's freaking everybody out because of my complexion being black. And, you know, I'm telling these stories, but I don't show y'all, you know, my, my, my paperwork. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I don't show y'all my paperwork as far as, you know, to let y'all know what time it is that, uh, you know, I was getting it like that. You know, Queen's Flip labeled me the cockiest kingpin, you know, and, you know, I think it kind of fit, you know, because I'm a cocky dude. I ain't even going to take it past that. I can't even find the paperwork right now, but it's in my joint. But anyway, Juan Ramon Mata was considered like a folk hero. Um, he used to give the workers, you know, the mothers, you know, gifts on Mother's Day, the, the, the children toys. Now, what CEO does that? You know, gives out gift to the children. They don't even they don't even think about the children. But this man did that. That's how you become a a a island don. You know, like Jim Brown. You know what I mean? And like Juan Ramon Mata. So this is what it is. Now, he was ex uh, when he first came to America. He got a pickpocket in charge in Midtown Manhattan is the first time the police dealt with him. This man went from being a pickpocket to being the wealthiest man on his island or in his country, let's say, you know, for the rat bastards and trolls that want to talk crap. You know, I see, I'm gunshot happy today because, you know, I'm remembering the good time spent with this man even though we was locked up in ADX Supermax on the 23-hour-a-day lockdown. That one-hour-a-day to come out to talk to this man and other men like that was a pleasure. That was relaxation and therapy for a gangster like me. And never forget, this is a gangster channel. If you're not a gangster, I'm going to give you three seconds to pop out. Now, even if you're not a gangster, you just want to learn about a gangster, sit your ass still and stop the trolling and the bull crap. Take the trolls to these fake channels that didn't experience nothing. Now, he got arrested for pickpocket in Midtown. You know what I mean? That's where he started. Then, next thing you know, he got caught in 19... Uh, 70, like 1978, 73, 72, and he escaped from a military base. He really walked off because it was like some lower joint. Check this out so you understand how powerful this man was. This man was arrested in Dallas Airport. You understand? He was arrested in Dallas Airport with 54 keys coming in on flight 542 and using a false, false passport. They threw out the 54 keys and gave him four years for using a false passport, so they sent him to a federal custody, which was like a holdover military base. And he got tired of it. He said, man, I'm out of here. I'm going back to Honduras. So he went back to Honduras, was on a run for several years, and while he was on a run, he hooked up with the Colombian Medellin cartel. You know, that's Escobar and them, for those of y'all that don't know. Just sit back and let me give you the history and stop the trolling and flip-flop wearing in public, man. Now, let me finish. So the U.S. seized like I said, 8,000 pounds of cocaine. A half a key is a pound. You know what I mean? So you double it, you split it in half. Keep the math going. So that's where we at. So now, when he, you know, was doing all of this, they tried to go get him. 
When they went to try to go get him, he was connected to the Honduran military force where he used to even fly around in the military jets with the military and hired ex-military officials to work for him. So they couldn't touch him. They refused to extradite him. They said that uh, Honduras did not have an extradition or extra, uh, you know, extradition to extradite anyone from Honduras to any other country for any crimes, and they wouldn't allow them to get them. So you understand. But they went, they went crazy with this man because they wanted him so bad, you know. So what they did was, you know, they went and kidnapped him. They went down to Honduras. When they went to Honduras, they rolled up on them, you know, the U.S. Marshals, because the government refused to extradite them. They went down, they hit him in the head, boop, you know what I mean? Just like I got hit in the head with the lock, boop, got to give him a shout out. You know, anytime I talk about dude hitting the head with the lock, I got to give a shout out, because that's how real gangsters do. All right, calm down, y'all, calm down. Gunshots, you know what I mean? Got to give a shout out to the dude that hit me here with the lock. When they went down there, and boop. Hit Ramon Mata in the head. You know, kidnapped him, threw a hood over his head, put him in a plane, and they flew him from Honduras to Dominican Republic. And then they turned him over to the U.S. Marshals to fly him from Dominican Republic to Kennedy Airport, where they whisked him. That mean flew him quick. <laughs> you know what I mean? For those of y'all that don't know, you know, we got the trolls here that don't know nothing, but they just here, you know, looking for something to complain about. Well, so they whisk him to Marion, Illinois, you know. One night, he's living the Honduran dream as the richest man in the country. And then the next night, he's walking into Marion Supermax in Illinois. Now, I was with him in ADX. You know, that was about 88. I was with him in 96, about eight years later, and he recanted all this to me, and he actually told me how he felt. You know what I mean? I could do videos all day because I done been around all these men, and they respect my gangster, and they told me their gangster stories. And my little 25 keys a day wasn't nothing, even though it blows and boggles the rat bastards and flip-flop man in public trolls ridiculously you know what i mean but you know so he told me like yo they put a hood on me you know they they they, they beat me they 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 shot they they shot him up with, with 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 stun guns you know in his genitals you know what i mean all over his body and tortured him as they brought him from honduras to dominican republic to kennedy airport to marion Illinois Supermax, which was the most secure federal prison in the United States at the time. Then he had four other indictments that they was trying to get him on, and they wound up taking him out to California. When they took him out to California, he went out there to stand trial, and they was investigating him for the killing of Kiki Kamaran. You know what I mean? The DEA agent that they saying that, oh, I didn't even tell you about that. Because you know I like to ride. You know, well, they said that he allegedly kidnapped and tortured a DEA agent that busted the shipment, you know what I mean? And, you know, it was a thorn in, you know, the narco's ass, you know? So they said that he, you know, he allegedly was participating in kidnapping and torturing of him. So that's why they wanted him so mad, so bad. They violated his rights and kidnapped him with a hood and took him to the United States, even though they had no extradition treaty. When he come up, he goes to court, and the judge okays them doing that. When the judge okayed them doing that, you know, he appealed that. And when he appealed that, the higher court said they didn't want to turn over the lower court you know, ruling, even though they see in the record that they violated his constitutional rights by kidnapping him from his country. But that's just how bad they wanted his body for, you know, Kiki's death. And then even in 2017, they cleared him of all, you know, dealings with it, you know. So he, my man deserves a round of applause for that. My man deserves a round of applause for that. 
Yeah. You understand? Calm down, y'all. Calm down. Let me finish. Let me finish this. You know what I mean? They said that he got arrested in Colombia in 1986 and was jailed and paid $2 million in 1986. That's equivalent right now to about $16 million in 2023. He paid $2 million. Say, ah, just let me go. Take the $2 million. You know, that's how official this man is. You know, just so you know what we're dealing with. All right? So that's how he got out of, you know, the Colombian situation in 1986. Now, like I said, he started out as a pickpocket to be the wealthiest man in Colombia. He even made it be known that he wasn't in the drugs, that he got his money from emerald mining in Colombia. He said he did. He went on TV while he was in custody in, in Honduras and said that he got his money from emerald mining in Colombia not from drug trafficking. So that's why I still say he's alleged because he was fighting this case. You see how dark his complexion is, you know, for a uh, 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 Spanish man. We're going to say, I want to watch the words from, you know, the rap bastards themselves, you know. They called him El Negro. When I was reading his papers and I saw El, El Negro came up, I said, Mata, that's what I used to call him. I said, Mata, who the hell is El Negro they keep mentioning? He said, man, that's me. I said, well, they said El Negro wasn't even there at the time of the kidnapping and torture of Kiki Camarena. And he said, I know. I said, well, you need to send that to your lawyer. And I gave him a little defense to send to his lawyer in Miami because he was still fighting this case. Just so you understand, you know, what I'm dealing with. But now, Juan Ramon Mata was a great man. A great man. Let me give you a little bit about his bidding. He was a funny dude. I used to play dominoes with him in ADX Supermax. And when we played dominoes and, you know, you know, if you, it, it, every five points is a point. So when you get 15 points, it's like a big deal. So he used to slam his bones on the table. Fiddling! That's what he used to yell when he slammed his bones. Fiddling! And he's giggling like a kid all happy in a candy store. Fiddling! Fiddling! And he's dancing and he's popping and I'm like, oh man, and this is the wealthiest man out of Honduras that I'm sitting in ADX Supermax with when all I saw was a little 25 keys a day on good days. You know what I mean? Some days I sold 50 keys for you rat bastards that want something to talk about. Some days I sold 25. Some days I sold 10. You know what I mean? But either way, I was making more than you rat bastards will ever see in your lifetime. That's why they hate me. And I don't have a problem with it. Because like Queens Flip said, you know, I'm the cockiest kingpin. But anyway, so me, Juan Ramon Monte, and another interesting, you know, character, we're going to call him. This one's from out west, a Colombian. Uh, Mario Villabona. If you don't know, I'm going to do a video on him too. Mario Villabona, if you're watching this, anybody know Mario Villabona, tell them to contact me. I like to contact these people before I do their stories to keep it official and authentic, you know, and make sure I got their approval. Mario Villabona is the one they said allegedly was supplying Harry O and Bo Bennett in California. Big shout out to Harry O just came home. <laughs> All right, all right, calm down, y'all, calm down. Relax, y'all, could y'all relax? Gunshots to the rat bastards, can't forget them. Now, um, Mario Villabona um, started off as a painter, you know, was painting and doing little construction work at houses, and he met one of the collect connects. They gave him some drugs to take. He go take the drug. Things go wrong like Scarface. He wound up coming off and bringing the drugs back and the money, and everything worked out right. And he told him, look, I ain't no damn painter. I'm trying to get some money, man. And they put him down, and he wound up blowing up. Met Bo Bennett over at the car wash, and then, you know, hit Bo off, and Bo was with Harry O. Said, I keep going, California. This for California, man. This for California, all right? Big shout out to California and a round of applause. You know, this for California. I just shoot. Calm down, man. Calm down, damn it. Calm down. Relax. Gunshots to 
the rat bastard. I can't keep. I can't. I just keep can't forget them. Could they have like a little twenty five keys was that goddamn much when we talking about dudes that made billions, you know, in this drug game. So me down at the bottom of the totem pole, we were little twenty five keys a day, blowing these dudes' minds. So I can imagine what they'll say about my man Juan Ramon Monta or Mario Villabona if they was to come up on YouTube. They'll yell, "Oh, he lied. He couldn't have made that uh, because I never seen more than twenty dollars." <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, so that was, you know, Mario Villabona. Let me ride back to my man, you know, Juan Ramon Mata. So everything was good. Juan Ramon Mata, after they beat him up, brought him over, he fought the charges of them kidnapping him and torturing him, you know, from his country that didn't have an extradition. And the courts upheld it because they wanted him to serve time because they felt that he was responsible for Kiki Camarea. Um, the DEA agents kidnapping, torture, and murder. That's how the government works. They break the law when they feel like it. Look what's going on right now. You know, how they're treating these politicians with these trials getting ready to come up, you know, with a white glove. They don't even go in the jailhouse. You know what I mean? They don't even go to jailhouse. I mean, police officers get killed in Washington, D.C., January 6th, you know, uprising, and you know what I mean? A citizen get killed. I mean, all types of craziness. Storm the Capitol, and none of these politicians is in jail. And they're fighting about how they're going to go to trial from the jail. They try to move it from the, from the state court to the federal court so that they can try to get a pardon from their friends. And that way, when they get to the state, uh, federal court, being there in the federal court, they've never took a case from the state court that the state court brought and prosecuted somebody in the feds. So that's why they try to get it moved over. If your woman to tell you about politics, put that in the comment. I'll tell you about politics. Cash app on the screen. All right? Remember that. So, you know, that's where we at. Now, we've been up here long enough. I don't want to give y'all too much. You know the old saying, too much sunlight burn the plant and too much water drown it. I don't want to burn you and I don't want to drown you. I just want to enlighten you and let the youth know it's not worth it. I made it to the top of the podium pole in the ghetto care sense. Nowhere near my man, you know, Juan Ramon Mata. And it was funny, right? Because when I was locked up, there was a little dude named Jeff. You know, I'm going to say his name because I talked to him on the phone, so you don't mind. His name is Jeff Taylor. You know, uh, he's from Staten Island. He's residing down south. Now, I ain't going to say where, but I had him on the show. Jeff Taylor, whenever I used to talk and I talked about, you know, yeah, I went to the, you know, I went and got this new outfit. You know, it was a funny color fuchsia, so I had to get a Mercedes to match it. So I went to the dealer to get a Mercedes to match my fuchsia outfit. He laughed at me. He couldn't believe it. He thought I was wailing. He even called me uh, Bunny Whaler's little brother. So you rat bastards could run with that. Cause I, you know, all that don't mean nothing to me. Cause the streets speak for me. My shit etched in stone. You know what I mean? And that's why I'm etching my man Juan Ramonta, Juan Ramon Monta in stone. But you know, now when this man is talking and he's saying that, you know, let me show, let me show you how he was. Let me give you an idea. Right, it was a white dude that he was cool with that he met there. So what he did was his his kids and family used to when my mom kids and family used to fly in from Honduras to come visit him, you know, from like Vegas, you know, Honduras, things like that. So he bought a house for this white dude's mother, and all she had to do was just leave two rooms open, so that when his kids or family came, they she could bring him up. Then he also brought the white dude a Lexus. A brand new Lexus to drive his kids up when they come on a visit, you know? Now, you know, you rat bastards. They say, oh, man, the jail ain't going to spend over $200,000 buying a house out in Colorado with them. $80,000 uh, uh, Lexus. Yes, you broke bastards. <laughs> it goes down like that in the hood, you know? So that's how Mario Villabona was carrying it. He was so cool. When I got to the ADX, he sent me down a commissary list. When he sent me the commissary list, he said, yo, you just came, you don't got nothing, fill that out. So I just put on the bare necessities what I wanted, you know, so toothbrush, toothpaste, you know what I mean, deodorant, and I sent it back to him. He yelled out the tear in Spanish and started laughing. Commissary day came and they bought me $300 worth of commissary that this man ordered for me, you know what I mean? And he was sending everybody on the tear. $300 a month. 
Could you imagine? This man is in prison, sending everybody on the tier. It was like 14 of us on the tier. And he sent everybody $300 a month so everybody could eat just as good as he eat. That's how kind-hearted this man was. You understand? I mean, come on. Y'all can't understand this, so you know, I'm going to tap out, man, because sometimes I feel like I'm talking to myself. Cop the book of Rowan Harlem at RowanHarlem.com. Cop the merchandise. You already know what time it is. I'm about to tap out. Juan Ramon Mata, I love you. I'm praying for you. Please, please, people, pray for my man Juan Ramon Mata, man. All right? That's family. He official gangster. Yeah, you rap bastards. I said gangster because they're quick to say, oh, but he poisoned community. He did that. Well, the government allowed him to bring it. The government kidnapped him. What do you say about the kidnapping of a man from his country and bringing him into your country and taking the trial for... Come on, man. Yo, I'm out of here. Because I get pissed off too easy even thinking about these rat bastards and trolls. I... Cheers. 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 The crime. Cheers. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. Hey! Shot the can of 26 yeah. He back on the strip uh -huh. Getting back in the mix yeah. What he mentions a gift Rush. You stand up ten toes down And I suggest you pay attention to this Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in hall uh -huh. He cut from the bottom back. Came up from the bottom back. Drop the book, you should go and get it An Instagram page and a YouTube You could go and visit yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin uh -huh. How he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make an audio Like two G's in the night. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let Shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper den. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive, you we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. So take heed, homie, lend it air. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community ours. So we can give back to the youth, them. They to troop them and bless up to all the rudiments. Yeah.